Hi everyone! In this video, we're going to take a look at the method of salt preparation known as titration. This method most commonly involves reacting an acid and an alkali to form salt and water, and it is used to prepare group 1 and ammonium salts which are all soluble. So let's take a look at one example of a salt that we can prepare using titration, that would be sodium chloride. So remember, we require an acid and an alkaline. So the chloride will come from hydrochloric acid, whereas the sodium comes from the alkali, which is sodium hydroxide. But then when you recall the other time when you study the topic of acids and bases, acids can react with metals, bases, as well as carbonates. How do I know so specifically that I must use sodium hydroxide, not sodium, not sodium oxide or sodium carbonate to prepare sodium chloride? Let's take a look at the options one by one. The first method of reacting a metal with an acid, you can get sodium chloride, but it is not a very safe procedure to do in the lab because group 1 metals like sodium are very reactive and the reaction will be explosive and therefore dangerous to carry out. So even though chemically speaking, there is a reaction between sodium metal and hydrochloric acid, you do not carry out this step in preparing sodium chloride. So instead, a safer method would be to use the reaction between an alkali and acid, for example, sodium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid, to form sodium chloride and water. Now let's head over to the lab and I'll show you what I mean when we say we are reacting an alkali with an acid. So on the left hand side, I have hydrochloric acid. And on the right hand side, I have sodium hydroxide. So to prepare sodium chloride, is it as simple as taking the acid and just pouring it into the alkali? What problems might arise? So pause the video, you may want to think through this for a while before I give you the answer. Okay, the first issue is if I were to mix the solutions just like that in the beaker, how much of each do I need to use? I do not know their concentration, so I can't calculate the volume and measure out the volume that I need for each of them. So I only know that I have acid and an alkali here. How much do I need to add such that it's just nice for them to completely neutralize? That is the first consideration. The second problem is, let's say if I were to add the acid to the alkali, if I have added an excess of an acid, then my salt will not be pure anymore because there will be an excess of one reagent. Okay, so in order for, for this salt to be pure, we must add the exact amount of acid and alkali so that complete neutralization happens. We cannot have an excess of any one of them. Okay, so you might think, okay, then maybe let me use an indicator so I know when to stop. Okay, so let me show you what that will look like. So over here, I'm going to add uh, methyl orange to my acid. So methyl orange turns red when the pH is low, such as in hydrochloric acid. So you say, okay, I'm going to add my sodium hydroxide in and stop when the indicator changes color. So the color change that we expect to see will be from red to orange. And then when there is an excess of an alkali, it will turn yellow. So let's see, I'm just going to pour it in. Okay, and you start to see a color change already. Then I'm going to stop. Do you think this method is very accurate? It's not very accurate, right? Because I'm just pouring. It's very hard for me to tell how much to add and how much I've added. So this method is not that precise. And secondly, I have an indicator in the flask. The indicator itself contaminates my salt. Correct. So I must repeat the experiment using the same amount but without the indicator. It is very difficult to control the amount of alkali to add to the acid such that there's just nice complete neutralization. So we need to use apparatus with a greater accuracy. And therefore, in this method of salt preparation, we will use a burette and pipette to measure out the exact volumes of acid and alkali needed to neutralize each other. So we know that this method works. How about using an oxide? Because this is also a base. Okay, can that work? Now you realize that because sodium oxide doesn't exist in aqueous solution, it actually reacts with water to form sodium hydroxide. So there's no such thing as Na2OAQ. Okay, and therefore being a solid, we can't put it into a burette. A burette can only be used to fill liquids. Finally, can we use a carbonate to react with an acid using the titration method? The answer is actually yes, because all your group 1 carbonates and ammonium carbonates are soluble in water. 
So you can actually use them in place of your alkalis for a titration reaction. But take note that this must be in aqueous form. So you can't use a solid carbonate. So how do we decide which alkaline acid to use? Very simple, we just break up the salt into two parts. The cation, which is sodium here, always comes from the alkali and we use sodium hydroxide. The anion always comes from the acid, so sulfate comes from sulfuric acid, chloride comes from hydrochloric acid, and nitrate comes from nitric acid. Okay, so it is pretty straightforward to decide which reagents to use in comparison to the other methods because the choices are rather limited. Now, what if I will want to prepare ammonium chloride? Okay, so where does ammonium come from? So recall the chapter of acids and bases, we learned an alkali known as aqueous ammonia. So when aqueous ammonia reacts with an acid, you can get an ammonium salt. For ammonium salts, you react aqueous ammonia with the acid. Chloride will use hydrochloric acid. Okay, so let's head over to our notes. So give the ionic equation a try, you should end up with something like that. Okay, so the steps are shown over here. Step 1, we fill a burette with sodium hydroxide and take note of the initial reading. Okay, and then we will pipette a fixed volume of acid into the conical flask, usually we use 25.0. And always remember to add the indicator because that will tell us how much of uh, the alkali we will need for complete neutralization. Instead of what I did just now, which is just to pour one solution to the other, we will do a titration in which we will add the alkali from a burette so we can control it very carefully, dropwise addition using the tap. Okay, and add it until the indicator change color. Okay, we will stop when the indicator changes from red to orange because that's just nice you have complete neutralization. If it's yellow, that means the pH has gone up too high and then you have added an excess of an alkali. Because just now I mentioned by having the indicator in your flask, the indicator actually contaminates the salt that is formed. So you need to repeat the same titration using the same volume of acid and alkali but without the indicator because the indicator will cause contamination. Finally, the same steps for crystallization will be used to obtain the salt. Over to the checkpoint, pause the video and give this a try before I go through the answers with you. So remember in titration, we need the two apparatus called burette and pipette. And this is used for group 1 or ammonium salts. So potassium sulfate will be the answer. Question 6. What reagents do we use to prepare the following salts? The anion comes from the acid, so this will be pretty straightforward. We'll fill that in first. And for the cation, it comes from the alkali. Okay, so for potassium, we'll use potassium hydroxide. For sodium, we'll use sodium hydroxide. And for ammonium, we'll use aqueous ammonia. An alternative for these reagents will be to use potassium carbonate, sodium carbonate, and ammonium carbonate. They will also work. So that's all we have for this video on titration. We'll see you next time. Bye.